Okay, so this is going to be the PIDs for uh, Betaflight 3.5 on the Diatom GTR90. Now, my GTR90 uh, is the version 1 with the 32K gyro, but the version 2 with the 8K gyro should be fine on the same PIDs as well. I am using the Gemfan 4 bladed 2035 props in my tune. If you use a different set of props, you're going to have to adjust the tune for your props. Um, I think that these props are going to be the best for this particular model, so this is why I chose those props. Uh, the, uh, the other ones, like the three-bladed Gemfan 2030s, I think those are a little bit harder to tune, and plus the consistency of those props are are not as good. You get some that are unbalanced, and the same goes with the uh, Emacs Avon props. Those are actually better for the 1106 motors, not the 1104, so if you use that, then you're going to have to Tune, try and tune that on your own because that's actually a more difficult tune. So I recommend getting the Gemfan 2035 props. I'll go ahead and I'll show you the differences here between uh, the baseline tune that's in the uh, intro video. So you're going to have to go back and watch that if you missed that. If you, you're going to need the rest of these settings from that original baseline. Otherwise, uh, if you just put in just the stuff you see here, you might not have the complete setup. So be aware of that. And uh, again, make sure you check your motor temperatures because if uh, they get too hot, you're going to burn them up. So keep an eye on those and don't fly for too long before you check them because if you fly for too long you may not, you don't, and are not aware of your temperatures, you might fry your motors. So I'm not responsible for that. You'll be using these PIDs at your own risk. Okay, I'll get right into the PID tuning tab here. And these are the PIDs that I came up with in the final tune. Uh, as I said before, this isn't a perfect tune. There's still a little bit of prop wash. I got most of that out of there. Uh, you're probably going to have to mess around with P and D some more if you want to get even more of that out of there, depending on how aggressive you fly. Um, these are the feed forward values that I came up with. This is what I like. You, pr Most people are probably going to want more feed forward than this, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and these are my rates here. I think these all numbers are the same. I did boost up my throttle boost to 8 on this model. Uh, you may even want to go higher, but I, I, I didn't really like it higher, so you might want to try like 10 or 15 if, and see what that's like. Turn all these on here. Um, I trim rotation, VBAD pin compensation, smart feed forward, and I trim relax. I boosted up my anti-gravity anti gain to 6, the default's 5, and then under TPA, uh, mine's up to 0.25, and then I, I reduced the TPA breakpoint to 1350. It's just a I uh, basically uh, attenuate these PIDs here at, at high throttle. And then under the filter settings, uh, I, I think the only thing that's changed from default here is the gyro low class. I lowered that from 90 from 100, so it's 90 now instead of 100, and that seemed to keep the motors a little bit cooler. So if you're at 90 and your motors are still hot, you probably want to drop this down to maybe 80, and then maybe even drop down the D term low pass to like 80 as well from 100. So again, keep track of your motor temperatures because uh, any of these settings might not be right for your particular setup um, and if, if it's something is off or wrong in your setup you're gonna get hot motors you might you might fry them so be very careful under the receiver tab I believe everything here is the same as what's on my baseline here make sure you, you select all four channels for smoothing and then under uh, let's show you on the CLI there's one thing that I'm I've been changing on some of the other models. I didn't change it on this one, but it's the uh, dynamic notch quality and notch width percentage. These are the defaults, I believe, 70 and 50. You can read the uh, uh, Betaflight 3, 4, and 3, 5 PID tuning guide as to what these are. Uh, basically, you can uh, reduce their, reduce this number to if you have a if you think that the notch quality is on a higher quality quality. But I left this on the defaults for this particular one. You may see this uh, different on other particular models depending on their particular setup. So other than that, everything else is the same as what's in the uh, baseline setup from the intro video, and then you should be able to use these settings to duplicate my setup and get the tune that you're gonna see. I'm gonna show you the uh, flight with the final settings first, so that you can see that flight first, and then I'm gonna show you a flight, or actually a bunch of flights where I take off and land, take off and land, and I'm actually, you know, tuning it and getting these kind of getting the numbers that I eventually got here at the end. If you guys are curious as to the process of the stuff I saw while I'm flying around and then landed and then made some changes. So I'm not going to narrate all that because that's uh, very tedious and very long winded. 
if you're really interested in knowing the process that I go through, you can watch the flight and see what kind of behaviors you see there and then see the things that I change to get an idea of the sort of the philosophy, the methodology that I use. It's not particularly, um, it's not particularly that interesting or that um, unusual. It's pretty basic stuff. And I've used those same techniques in previous videos that I did narrations on. So you can look at the previous videos and this pitch tuning playlist to get an idea of what's going on in the process that I take for pit tuning. Other than that, I'll go ahead and show you the flights and I will have another, probably the M, the GT M2, probably will be the next video. Um, and then we'll see what after that. So if you have any other comments or questions, requests, leave them down in the section down below and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.